This lesson deals with supplemental problem 2.1. You can find this problem in the course ebook in the chapter two supplemental problems on page one. Suppose we have a current that flows through a circuit element with a value of 20 milliamps. The charge on one electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. So thus, one over 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th is the number of electrons in one coulomb of charge. Let's find the total charge and the number of electrons that were transferred during an interval of one microsecond. In the course notes, we had that I is equal to dQ dt. What we wanna find is the change in charge, and where's dQ. So let's solve this equation for delta Q. Integrate both sides dt, so the left-hand side and the right-hand side, from some start point T0 to T1. And on the right-hand side, the dt's cancel, and we're left with just the integral of dQ, which is the value of Q at the upper limit minus Q at the lower limit, and that is our change in charge can be the integral of i dt from t0 to t1. Okay, our value of i is just 20 milliamps, just a constant, you can pull it out in front. So you've got the integral then of one dt, that's just gonna be equal to t, evaluated at the upper limit of one microsecond and the lower limit of zero. Our answer then is 20 milli times one micro. 20, 10 to the minus three times 10 to the minus sixth, that would be 10 to the minus ninth. And a symbol for that is a small n for nano. So 20 nanocoulombs is our answer. Calculated the number of electrons above as 6.25 times 10 to the 18th electrons per coulomb times the 20 nanocoulombs. So 20 times 6.25 is 125. 10 to the 18th times 10 to the minus 9th would be 10 to the 9th. So the answer then would be 125 times 10 to the 9th electrons. And normally I put this in our injury notation with the letter that stands for 10 to the 9th, which is actually giga. But most scientists don't talk that way, so I'm just gonna leave that just as 125 times 10 to the ninth electrons. If in doubt, put the correct symbol there. There was a footnote over here. Let's take a look at that. You could solve this equation for Q of T1 as the integral from T0 to T1, plus, put this on your side of the equation, Q of T0. So we're saying that the charge transferred at some time T1 is an initial value, plus the integral of the current between T0 and T1. Again, this is called the initial condition that we refer to in calculus. Now, sometimes you just wanna calculate Q of T. In other words, T is equal to T1. So very common to replace the T1 by just T in the answer here, but also in the upper limit. Now, because we're making this T, we really shouldn't have the letter T over here. It means something quite different. So let's just use a dummy variable X. Q of T at some time in the future is the integral from T0 to T of i of x dx plus the initial value at t0. And this is supplemental problem 2.1.